Welcome back to Switch to Linux. So today we want to have another look at some software. This is like getting very, very late in the evening and uh, I'm getting very tired. So if we need to break this down and do a little bit more a little bit later, that's cool. I don't really mind going ahead and doing uh, more work with the program we're going to look at today. Uh, but as, uh, as you know, uh, I do, one of the things I do want to focus more on in this upcoming year is talking more about Linux software. Um, because the, one of the things that, that I've been talking about a lot lately is there's a whole lot of people who wanted to write distros and be like, you know, this is how you can run your Windows programs on Linux. And I'm just like, no, stop. First, the Windows programs that will run on Linux are generally old. Not to say that we can't get new or good programs running, but a lot of them are old. And Linux has a lot of great, great programs. Rather than trying to port all of our Windows programs to Linux, maybe if we want to switch over to Linux, we start looking at the software that's available over there. And I get that there are certainly some exceptions that, that we don't want to work with. Um, but there are a lot of programs that are just as good. So what we're going to look at today is another part of the LibreOffice suite. We are going to look at the spreadsheet program. Um, and the spreadsheet program is called the LibreOffice Calc program. And uh, what we're going to have a look here is how we can do, uh, depending on how far we get, I'm, maybe I'll just kind of walk through how to set up one big sheet. and Maybe we'll come back to a little bit more advanced stuff later. Uh, this is stuff that I know a little bit more about than some of the other topics I might cover because I am a spreadsheet nerd. I am so much of a spreadsheet nerd that even when I was in high school and, um, and early college, as you're working, you have to punch in and punch out at work, I was actually saving my timesheets and developing a spreadsheet and logging the amount of hours I worked against the amount of the paycheck that I actually had and I was such a geek that I had a spreadsheet that if I plugged in the number of hours I had built a trend line that was accurate within five pennies as to what my actual take-home paycheck was going to be. Hi, my name is Tom and I am a spreadsheet nerd. Um, as far as my budgets, I do all my budgets on spreadsheets. I don't mess with you know silly budgeting software but my spreadsheets like, oh man, it's got a page for each month and then five or six other pages to log all sorts of neat stuff. Um, so I'm not going to show you the budgeting spreadsheets, um, but what I am going to show you here is I grabbed an old random grade book that I had and I scrubbed out all the student names and I'm going to show you what I used to do for the spreadsheets. And then if we get the chance, we're going to have a look at some of the other spreadsheets that I had laying around. Um, I couldn't really find a copy of that one. I'm sure it's on one of my backup drives in there at very well, maybe on a three and a half inch drive. I don't know. <laughs> I'll have to look around for that one. Um, but what we're going to do here is we're just going to have a look at some spreadsheets. Now, in full disclosure, uh, the spreadsheets were actually written at the time that I was running uh, Windows. And so these were all written on Windows. But I did go back through and verify that all of the neat functionality you may not even think LibreOffice could do is indeed possible. So uh, without further ado, we're going to go ahead and transition the screen over here. As you can see, I'm kind of on my, on my old work laptop. Um, yeah, this is a lot of the reason is I'm so tired, I do not have time to move everything over to the other computer, and all these files are already right here. So we're going to start with a grade book, and then we're going to see if we get any further than that. So what we do here is uh, and I'm going to change my screen around here a little bit just so that we can uh, uh, we can just kind of get a, a better view here what we got. All right, let me go ahead and move a few files up here just kind of get them out of our way. All right. Beautiful. You can see the little screenshots in the background. I think, where's that background at? Uh, that is Bridal Veil Falls in Provo, Utah. All right. 
So what we're going to do here is we're just going to have a look at some spreadsheets. And I might move this around and kind of put it behind the picture every now and again. I'll try and be cognizant to move that around if we actually need anything up in the upper quadrant, just so you can see better. So what I created here is just a basic uh, spreadsheet. Now, one of the things that you can see is just like Excel, and kind of I'm going to be talking about this as uh, as related to or as is similar to Excel. So just like Excel, we have the ability to drag this bar up and down. And so here is where that, that main block is there. And then if you need this bar, you just grab it and you drag it down as many columns as you need. I use these in my budgeting to have my monthly budget up there and then my entries down here. In the case of this spreadsheet, I'm just going to want to keep this bar over here so that I can see, uh, I can always keep what the assignment was near the top. I could very easily do the same thing here to line up the student if I want to do something like this. So there you can see I can line up the student with the assignment group so I can see everything. This one here, I never really bothered with that one. The one on the top, I, I did. And again, top and side, just grab this little dark corner that's right here. Hold your mouse button down and you can drag it. All right, so that's how you do that. Same thing on the top. So what I did is I put in my various uh, sections, my various quiz grades, homeworks, etc. And then you'll notice here near the end, I put in some conditional formatting that kind of gave me some of the views uh, to see really quickly how students are doing. So we use status bars over here. We use icon bars over here. So you can see that the students with a, with a B average or higher have a green check mark next to them. The C and I think C and D students are going to have the yellow. And that looks like just C students are have the yellow icon and the... Uh, the D and below students have the red icon. And so this way I could very quickly find a student. If a student comes and sees me in the office, I could really quickly over here get a quick, quick look and say, okay, well, he's not doing super well. So you can see how I have these conditional formatting set up. So what you'll notice, what these are, is if you use your conditional formatting. So the way you're going to do this is highlight the cells that you want conditionally formatted. And then over here, and let me uh, move my thing out of the way of the picture here. Just make sure we can find it. Um, it is, there's the conditional formatting chart over here. I'm going to pull this arrow down. Let me just, uh, ch -ch -ch -ch. here's what we're going to do. I'm just going to get rid of the picture for a second here. Um, so what you'll notice over here on my default toolbars, I have these conditional formatting. And what these are is this first one here will do some type of condition formatting. Uh, this one here will, will give us a color scale. And I use color scales, I think, on the first part. Uh, first sheet. This guy here is a data bar, which is what these blue bars over here are data bars that are highlighted. And then, we, of course, we have the icon sets, which are in these guys over here. Let's have a quick look at the grade comparison sheet. Um, I thought I'd use those colors somewhere. Um, maybe doing both there. Okay. Um, I thought I had, oh no, that's right. I was testing it on another, uh, on another sheet just to make sure everything still worked. Um, so what we're going to do here is I'm going to walk through how to set these status bars. So for example, if I have, you know, a few random numbers, so let's say, uh, one, five, two, eight, uh, let's do 10, Five, three, one, oops, seven, eight, six, three, two. Okay, so suppose I have this set of numbers and I want to change some either some da data bars or color formatting, anything else. What I'm going to do is I'm going to highlight the individual cells and then I want to pick whichever one of these I want. So if I want these cool data bars, just click the data bars and then what we're going to do is we're going to look at the conditions in the cell. And so this is where you pick down color schemes, data bars, icon sets. So we'll pick a data bar. 
and then what you're going to do is come down and um, you're going to decide on your options. So you can do all cell, cell value is, formula is. So if we want to do cell value is, and then set your ranges. So between, so let's say between one and four, uh, you know what? Let's do an icon set for this. Let's cancel this. We're going to do an icon set for this. I was thinking data bars, but those kind of work best if you were, you're working on a main percentage. I guess we can do it. You know what? Never mind. Let's do it. We're going to do it. Uh, we're going to use data bars. We're going to use cell value is, and we're going to do between, and we're going to say between one and three, actually between, eh, let's do one and 10. Uh, I'm just still thinking my this is what happens when I don't have enough sleep as I'm trying to think what I want to do because I'm thinking how do I set my data bars between these okay uh, because your your data bars have to be um, it has to be all your cells and the data bar does things automatically Duh. <laughs> like conditional formatting no conditional formatting is what you use to do colors and icon sets not data bars all right so there's your there's your data bars um, it's just pick the pick the data bar set between your your system here now if you don't like the color of that you can hit your more options and you can choose your colorations so down there's your green data bars um, or you can do let's see there's a gradient fills I'm just gonna try and find something kind of ominous here I'm gonna find like a black or something. There you go, black, black data bars. There you go. So there's how you would set up your basic data bars. Now, if I wanna do icon sets on top of these, um, and I did that on another page, not this one, we're gonna pick an icon set. So then we look at, uh, we're looking at the cells, and what we're gonna do is we're going to look at percentages and values. So I'm gonna grab values. So the first ones are down, so this value we're going to pick 5 and this value we're going to pick 10. Okay, so here you'll see that it goes down anything up to 5. The 5s use the over arrows and anything above the 5s, let's see, I'm sorry, anything up to the 10s, that's what I said is the 10. Now what we'll do here is let's go ahead and change this. Um, let's do seven and four and let's change the we can do different icon sets there's smileys triangles there's various boxes let's do this let's do every two so two four four six and eight so there you can see that it's going to give us the uh, the bars based upon uh, based upon where you're at inside the system there so that's kind of how your your icons there work um, that's what I did to set up uh, set these guys up in in this manner I was looking for I thought I could do data bars on top of your icon sets um, pretty sure it's possible I know I did it on a separate sheet I just can't remember exactly how uh, but regardless uh, that's kinda how you set up your grades um, back over here is where you can see that we have uh, both implemented we have the data bar implemented and an icon set implemented so what we're gonna do here is I'm just gonna have a, a quick look at the formatting there just kinda grab that click on the icon sets Okay, let's do these. So that actually gets rid of them. Um, I have to remember exactly how I did both. Um, it might be a setting over, over here in the icon sets. course if you're setting your icon sets you do have to set your percentages um, and what was, what was I saying for anything greater than these 
Oh, that's actually what I did incorrectly on the uh, last data set is I went in the reverse order. I think 60 was my cutoff for this one and 80 was my cutoff for this one. So there's how we get our cutoffs. Uh, that's 80.5. There you go. That's how you set it right. Okay. So there's how we're setting our uh, data bars there. All right. This one here, let's go ahead and fix this one. This is the, the challenge of what happens when you don't fully test what you're doing prior to running it. <laughs> oh, that's what I didn't do is I never changed my values, my uh, percentages ever. There you go, that's how we did it. So I had it right, I just uh, forgot to change the percentages. So you can do some pretty advanced things on your spreadsheets. Um, so here's where I set, uh, again, a data scaling range over here. I did the data scaling and then I did these percentages. You can see this class did pretty well on the on the lab grades. Um, it was the exams that were scary in my class. Um, so anyway, uh, that's how you set up your basic spreadsheets with uh, nice data bars. Of course, I only use uh, a graph over here once uh, where I did these exclusively based on the letter grade. If you double click in on the chart, you'll be able to um, you'll be able to do some things like uh, set up where your uh, where your ranges are at and stuff like that. So if I right click here, I can hit your data ranges. I can hit my chart type. So here's your data ranges, and then you'll see here. Um, Here's our fill colors, our borders, our Y values. Okay. So this is uh, this is a pretty easy chart, just using some of those uh, some of the the data sorting features, things like that. So we're gonna close this. We're not gonna save it. Um, the next one we're gonna have a look at. So this uh, this picture here is inside of Timpanos Cave again in Provo. Not all these pictures are Provo. Just a few of them seem to be. All right, so here I have some sample calculations. Um, this one here, I wanted to just show you how you can do some, some chart things. So what we're looking at here is this is came out of my chemistry files. So what I'm looking at here is a Fahrenheit temperature, the Celsius temperature, um, and this is the calculated Celsius. This is the observed Celsius, and I think this was either something from a trend line or however we were correcting our files. And I did the same over here with Kelvin. And then um, you'll see that I have two tabs here. The the two tabs are the Cal the Celsius tab and the Kelvin tab. And you'll notice that each one of these has uh, some graphs on them. And then it it will actually have your uh, corrected versus your um, uh, observed and then you'll see that there is a trend line on here with all of the equation data uh, entered now one of the things that LibreOffice does not do that you can do on um, on Excel is you can come down here and you can right click and you can basically convert a tab into a chart that is not directly possible in LibreOffice, but you can simulate it in, in this manner. So you just create the chart over here and it will be locked into the data sheet. So it doesn't matter if I move this onto any page or whatnot. But what we're gonna do is we wanna do a print preview. So under file, go down to print preview and just like Excel does, the print preview is going to give you 
um, the print preview is going to give you your uh, uh, basically your setup so you can format the page etc all right and then when you leave the print preview you'll see that you get this solid grid here and the solid grid will tell you your print margins that does that on Excel it does it here on LibreOffice so what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to grab the edges of the chart and I'm going to expand it to the same size as our sheet there so now if I go and I look at my print preview you'll see that it gives me just my chart like that so that is what we want to do there now again um, clicking on the data sets and you gotta double click in on the chart to be able to, to get into the data sets but now you can right click on your data set you can format your data series you can enter uh, here's your inserting a trend line uh, we can look at error bars here x error bars y error bars whoa let's not do that um, let's look at y error bars all right, so there's a standard deviation, constant values, percentages, standard deviation, you know. And you can do all these types of things right here on the chart. Over here is where you can change your chart types. So you can move your chart types to, to different types, columns, lines, bubbles, etc. You can do, you know, you can even do 3D charts like this. Um, simple charts, charts where you can't see the, the specific lines in there. So there's all sorts of all sorts of ways that you can you can run your charts. All right. So there's how you can um, there's how you can manipulate your charts. Of course to create a chart you just want to um, grab the columns of data that you want to use uh, you can just highlight them all in one group and then there is the chart option up here under your chart you're near the top so clicking on this this will get you the information of course keeping note of the type of uh, chart you're looking at here most of us geeky science people would generally use a chart more like this and then what you're gonna do is you can set your data ranges X values your Y values and then you can give it your titles, your subtitles, your axes titles and then finish and again if you want this on another chart you can simply copy it or uh, cut it um, control I think control cut should do it um, nah, it looks like you actually do have to copy it so let me go ahead and okay there it goes the chart paste the chart once again come down here hit your print preview uh, if you get set up like this on the portrait page hit the format page button and then under your uh, page you want to find your orientation switch over to landscape close the preview and then now you'll have your guides to help you adjust this now this is kind of important stuff to uh, to learn how to do, especially if you're going to be going into any sciences. I actually, some students, I swear, um, I actually had a student uh, when we were doing a lot of spreadsheet stuff, and she actually looked at me in this mocking tone when I was trying to teach the students how to. Um, uh, I was trying to teach the students there how to. Um, do spreadsheets and stuff and she just looks at me and she's just I will never need to know how to use spreadsheets why are we even wasting our time I'm like what's your major oh biology I'm gonna go into the fields in Africa with the monkeys I'm like eh, no you're gonna be doing spreadsheets out the wazoo trust me I think I actually did over a thousand spreadsheets in grad school and um, no matter what you're gonna have to use spreadsheets if you're gonna go into anything scientific 
um, and uh, not to totally scare you, uh, but this is actually one of the spreadsheets that I pulled out of uh, my chemistry work. And just from the looks of this, I would guess that this is chemistry two. This is just freshman chemistry two. Now, understand that I did really well on my labs because I knew how to set up my spreadsheets well. Um, so here is, I mean, of course, this is a uh, titration of um, uh, some base into probably sodium hydroxide into phosphoric acid. You can see the the two inflection points there. Um, here is actually your derivative um, and here is your second derivative of your uh, titration curve and here is how I'd set things up. Now I did notice that these did not translate quite as well into uh, LibreOffice and to be perfectly fair I'm not sure how well they translated into modern ones either. Understand this is undergrad work I did these on Word or on Excel in Office 1995 about 20 or so years ago. In fact, I scrubbed the date off of one of the other forms that came from this. The calculation sheet actually came from the same folder. I scrubbed the date off of that and it was actually 1998. Um, and so we're talking 19 years ago. I don't know if, if I sent this over to my Windows 7 computer with, uh, with Excel if it would actually uh, translate well either. I, I did not uh, actually bother to do that. Um, but what we're going to do is we're going to zoom in on it. You can see here that I actually did put a lot into, uh, into these. Here's my burette readings. So yep, it is sodium hydroxide. Here's my burette readings. Here's my sodium hydroxide. Here's our recorded pH. Um, don't ask me exactly how we did this uh, 19 years ago. I don't remember the experiment. Probably just a basic pH meter. And then what you'll see here is that um, it kind of uh, took with it some some extra characters there. <laughs> um, so what I was um, what I was after, I think on this one is the delta pH. Um, and of course, to set this up right, I just go in here and hit delta pH, make sure I have symbol set. If symbol's not installed on your computer, you can download it or uh, what I did, I'm not sure if it was on this computer or if it was on my other computer, but I did a video showing you how to install the Windows fonts onto the symbol as one of those Windows fonts. But here we're just going to grab uh, anything else. Oh, I'm not a big fan of that particular font. Let's do that. There you go. So there's your delta pH. So here is clicking on the cell with the formula tells me what it is. Oh, I guess that's not a volume. Delta pH. That's a delta volume, isn't it? Um, oh, 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 we're going to cancel that. Um, that's a delta volume. Um, this one here, clicking on this, that's a delta pH. So there we go. So again, I just come back over here. So if you are thinking of going to college for any type of scientific field, if you learn to set your spreadsheets up using the formulas, using the symbols, neat, organized fashion, charts on separate pages, you are going to ace lab even if you didn't do a good job. Trust me. I was a student. I successfully did that. I was a professor. It makes it easy to read. Um, and so. I got my sheets spread up, set up here, and of course, if you're doing a chemistry titration, there's your volume, there's your uh, delta pH. Uh, I believe this is average volume, so yeah, B3, uh, D3, yep, so that's uh, B3, and the D3 is right here. You'll, uh, it's actually taking it over there a little bit, but it's... Uh, B3 plus D3, so this is your volume plus your change in volume divided by 2 gives us, I don't know, either a mean or an average or something. And then this guy here gives me the, what do we got here, our, oh, okay, so this is taking, uh, this is taking your, um, 
uh, your volume, let's see, your, your delta pH divided by your delta volume, which is precisely how you get a derivative. <laughs> and so this is a, a first derivative of the volume and pH. And then we went through uh, calculating the rest of it. And the reason you do this is these inflection points on the second derivative here will actually tell you uh, precisely uh, in chemistry where your, um, uh, where your neutralization points are. And it looks like I had a lot of error due to uh, pH meters. <laughs> At least that's what my college student brain claimed. Uh, but regardless, um, you can set these spreadsheets up uh, much the same way as you could in, uh, in Excel. So I could have done all of these spreadsheets completely here in LibreOffice uh, with all of the nice curves, all of the nice fanciness. Um, we looked at the data ranges, we looked at how to do conditional formatting of cells, which could easily tell you what these are. Uh, so we looked at all of those features and all of those settings inside of, uh, of LibreOffice. Obviously we've only scratched a little bit of the surface, but I just wanted to show you that LibreOffice is just as robust as Excel is. And so why are we paying big licensing fees for Excel? LibreOffice does the same thing. Um, again, with these up here, um, this is, eh, maybe these don't translate quite as well into Excel. Maybe it's just the fact that these are all extremely old anyway. And so that's uh, certainly worth bearing and keeping in mind. Um, so if you do want to see more about how to use LibreOffice or more about cool calculations or things like this, um, you know, let me know. I would be glad to spend some more time doing some more advanced things inside of the spreadsheet programs. Uh, I'm just kind of a geek and I uh, was looking for something to, um, uh, something to do here as I, um, uh, as I was uh, wrapping up the evening and uh, I'm not sure if I'm going to get a chance to get out a video tomorrow or not. Uh, I'm going to give it my best try, but eh, we'll see what happens. I guess I'll go ahead and end with a nice uh, picture of uh, the Tetons. This was actually sunrise over at uh, Tetons. Um, so with all that being said, um, you know, Linux uh, has some fabulous software. I'll be highlighting some more software uh, over the course of this year. Uh, if there is software packages you'd like me to have a look at, uh, just to give either a first impression or use it for a while and let you know what I think, uh, let me know. I'd be glad to uh, consider some of those. And with all that being said, this has been Tom, and I hope that you enjoy switching to Linux.